I call Denise Lee. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I wish to rise and take a call and highlight two purposes of the bill today. They're not highlights, but here I go anyway. One is the removal of provisions relating to national standards so that national standards cannot be reinstated in the future. And the other is the repeal of the charter school provisions. On the removal of national standards, Mr Speaker, the bill states that it paves the way for work with experts and stakeholders to develop a new system. Well, Mr Speaker, nothing in the legislation actually starts this process or even creates a framework for that process. The Secretary of Education and those who are on the select committee with me across the way will know she said this, confirmed that this week they have not designed a system. Once again, this is an ideological driven reversal of a past national government policy with nothing to replace it. Every time I debate in this House, it seems to be the common thing from the new government, scrap it and leave it blank. They've scrapped the $50 million east-west link process, where's the big idea to solve congestion? They've scrapped pay equity legislation, no easy process to negotiate now for women. Where's the big idea there? They've scrapped targets to keep the public service accountable. Nothing to replace that either. In this House, Mr Speaker, we get technical, we get legal and we get detailed, but today we're getting personal. My daughters were in primary school when national standards came in. I went on the school board that year. My reports from my daughters were arbitrary and they were casual. And then, with national standards, they went to uniform, consistent and comparative. As parents, we know that we wanted and we wanted and we still do today both overall teacher judgment but also cohesive nationwide content direction. That's what parents want. And what of deleting the charter school model, Mr Speaker? The state school system works but it is inevitable that some kids will slip through. They're struggling. What of them? Who will catch them, nurture them? Who will give a damn and show them a different way of being successful and achieving? So what's the real reason that Labor are closing them? Have Labor not seen the results from these schools? Pass rates, turnaround school attendance, newfound respect, the list goes on, but listen to actual parents, and I quote, my son was changed from academically directionless to successful. An absolute lifesaver for my daughter. She thought she wasn't smart and that she wouldn't have a future and that she wasn't good enough. It was a miracle. Madam Speaker, the bill also provides transitional arrangements to allow time for negotiations about the future of these schools that are already operating. Well, you only have to do a small amount of research, really skim the surface, to see that this is more of a stick than a carrot approach. The minister released a press release and he introduced, when he introduced the bill that said, quote, my preferred option is to explore early termination of contracts by mutual agreement. There's no ambiguity in that statement. It is clear what the Minister's intentions are, and we shouldn't fall for the charade that the government will give these schools, the same ones that are helping give so much value to students failed by the state, any alternative option other than shutting down. It all ends the same way. The press release also said, I'm reserving my right to issue a notice of termination for convenience. What interesting and appalling language to use. Convenient for who? Students or the minister? Mr Speaker, when it comes to charter schools, it's really quite simple. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. These schools work, they just don't work for the unions. Thank you.